Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, cool. We're live. We got people on. I'm gonna stop this. Okay, what's up, everyone? Here we are, ready to rock and roll on uh, some Facebook Live. And we have a stellar, if I do say so myself, uh, content uh, deck presentation. Um, and you're going to get some cool stuff for free too for, for attending this webinar and just registering for those that are not able to uh, watch live. Um, we're still going to send the recording out to you, obviously. Uh, but everyone's going to be getting some free work workbooks over the next couple weeks um, after this, which is going to be cool. Hey, Tom, what's happening? Thanks for being on. Um, if you're watching on Facebook Live, uh, do us a favor and just comment below the video, like where you're watching from, maybe tag your funeral home. That'd be cool. Uh, we just want to kind of get an idea of where everybody's tuning in at, uh, from. Um, so I'll give you a quick rundown. We're going to go through a pretty sweet deck uh, with great information on how funeral homes and cemeteries can be currently kind of marketing during a pandemic and what should we be doing kind of looking ahead? How does marketing uh, change going forward given the, the, the what's happening right now? So um, a lot of good content. Again, if you uh, registered or you got to pop off halfway through this, no worries. We're going to be sending out the recording after it's over. If you have questions, there's a couple different ways you can ask questions. One in the chat ask questions, and then there is also a Q&A button um, if you're watching through Zoom where you can uh, ask a question. Now, uh, I'll introduce uh, the, the panel and the, and the team here. Uh, we have Eli Gable, who is uh, one of our brand strategists here at Disrupt, and he's on my content team. And then we have Josh Tasonia. A lot of you May oh, come on, it's Jeff. I'm Jeff, the funeral commander, Brian. I'm your co host oh. You don't recognize me? Look at his flashing shirt. You're a lot less silver than the commander. I, I know that, and I'm a lot less tan. Um, I don't look like the sun, but that's all right, though. He's that's getting right. a lot more sun. I'm jealous. I'm jealous of Jeff. You know, so You look like you've been in quarantine in Ohio for the last seven weeks. Yeah, rain every day, crying in a corner, but ready to give out some great content today. That's right. To all those viewers and, out there. And we're smart. Uh, we are sponsored by Starbucks. And we are also being sponsored by uh, Black and Mild. So uh, <laughs> exactly. Way to, way to go, Josh, a.k.a. Free promo. To, to, to Sonia. Josh is our creative <laughs> director. As you can see, he's being creative. He's got his uh, Tiger King shirt on. Um, no tigers, just Jaguars, so, though, sadly. Jaguars. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. So uh, great team that we've compiled here. They're going to be monitoring Facebook comments as well. So if you're watching live through Disrupt or you're watching live through ConnectingDirectors.com uh, Facebook page, if you've got questions, throw those in the comments. Uh, they will be monitoring and, and flagging me to, to answer those questions. But look, we really want this to be interactive. If we don't get all the way through the deck, fine, no problem. We want you to get out of this um, valuable content, valuable resources, and hopefully take ideas away from this. You can immediately start implementing in your funeral home or cemetery or even some of our supplier uh, folks that are on as well. Um, and then hopefully, too, you understand what Disrupt is about and how we're different than all the other marketing companies that are out there. Um, you know, pretty, pretty cool stuff happening here. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, we'll get started. Maybe with the deck, where did it go? Hold on one second. Technical difficulties. I got to have it pulled up to be able to, to view it. So um, that'd be a good idea. All right, <laughs> here we go. Somebody said, yeah, like Brian said, it's going to be jag, just filled to the brim of great content for you guys today. Um, it's going to be talking about some basic one-on-one social media customer service stuff that you should be doing, but you may overlook. And then we're getting into the weeds with some content ideas that you can be implementing right now on your content calendars for your social 
coming up with great holidays like Mother's Day, which is a huge holiday for, well, mothers in general, but also for your funeral home getting out there and really celebrating all those mothers that help everyone out. And then Father's Day as well. And I'm so, going to throw it. Go ahead and go ahead and start putting in those questions in the Q&A. Like we want to go ahead and get those going so that we can see where you guys are at. That way we can talk about the things that matter the most to you guys actually watching this right now. Let's make it happen. All right. So, uh, Eli, are you watching the feeds? Are we good? Is the screen being shared? We are good. The screen okay. is being shared. People are on on Facebook as well. So, All right. Cool. Here we go. On. All right. So smart em empathic marketing for funeral homes and cemeteries during and, and after a crisis. So quickly, like uh, who we are, uh, we are Disrupt Media. We are a social media agency that focuses hardcore on the death care space. So funeral homes, cemeteries, crematories, pet cremation businesses, and then suppliers in the profession as well. Um, uh, we are also the creators of ConnectingDirectors.com. So many of you have been readers and followers of Connecting Directors for the last 13 years that it has been in existence. Um, and Disrupt Media is our, our social media arm. We work with over uh, 200 plus funeral homes and cemeteries uh, and crematories across North America, as well as a few other countries like our friends over in Singapore. So. Uh, we, we, we understand the profession. We understand the consumer. Our content is engaging 7 million consumers a month over the age of 55. So we've got a lot of data on that core demographic that is most profitable for funeral homes. So I'm Ryan Thogmartin, CEO and founder, Josh Tissonia, creative director, and Eli Gable, who is a copywriter and digital strategist, and on my content team. So some questions you may have right now related to to the pandemic like why should i be marketing do customers even care if i'm marketing right now how do i navigate this situation best practices for social media during a crisis actionable content ideas for a funeral home and tactics and investments for future growth we're going to cover all of these things over the next 45 minutes uh, that are going to be really valuable we're going to show you some examples of content we're going to talk about why video content right now and ongoing is so valuable, give you some data to back up what we say. And I, I wanna kind of preset, we are a very heavy data analytic driven company. Everything that we do is mapped to the data that we can extract out of Facebook from content. So real numbers, real content that are our own, our own data uh, that our analytics are, are pulling out of the content that we're creating. So, um, why is social media such a big focal point in conversation right now? And if you, any of you, I know there's some of you that I've gotten emails from that we're going to attend this webinar, but you were also on our funeral unconference, uh, that we hosted a few weeks ago. And we talked a lot about how right now social media is the only direct connection that funeral homes have to your communities. And as we've shifted through, Really, the last six weeks, um, you know, back in March when everything kind of flipped on its head, gatherings were limited, gatherings were completely wiped out, period, gatherings are 10 people, like there's every state's kind of experienced their own thing at one point or the other. Now we're kind of all in the, in the same place. Most states are in that shelter and home and gatherings have been extremely, extremely limited. You don't have that direct connection with the face-to-face -face with the with families anymore or people coming in and out of the funeral home where you're getting to create relationships with other people in your community so socials become the outlet for you to talk about those gatherings to talk about the restrictions how you're still serving families are you making virtual arrangements you know there's a lot of information that needs to go out and social has been the way that funeral homes have been able to do that. And, the, and that comes because of the value and where the consumer has gone. Now, if you've watched past webinars, we talk about that 45 and older demographic that's most profitable to funeral homes and how 75% of that demographic are daily active users of Facebook. So right off the bat, that's one reason you absolutely no brainer should be engaged in social is because that core demographic that you need to reach 75 percent of them are on facebook every single day and we know exactly how to get in front of them like it's such a no-brainer to be engaging there 
Now, there's misconceptions of how you should be engaging. Listen, if you're one of the funeral homes that have been, or cemeteries that have been automating social media content, meaning that you're paying for generic grief and inspirational posts because it's cheap. Maybe it's $2 a day. Maybe it is um, someone's giving you content because um, it's $99 or you're signed up with their pre-need program. So they're giving you free generic content that's going to drive you leads. If you have been automating social media, you have completely missed out on the opportunity to engage your community at such a high level and have conversations right now because you've put things on auto autopilot and completely disregarded the current situation that we're in. So your marketing hasn't adjusted. And if you're automating, you can adjust because things are paid for and it's just like click a button and it's done for you. That is not working. So some consumer behavior shifts right now. Uh, this is directly from uh, our partnership with Facebook. 44% increase in people watching movies at home, 44% increase in people going online, 39% increase in the streaming of videos. This is the big one, a 35% increase in the time spent using social media. That is huge right now, especially if 75% of that core audience that's most profitable for you was on Facebook every single day prior. Now that audience has increased the amount of time they're online 35% since this pandemic started. So big, big opportunity to be at the forefront and engaging those consumers. Now, do consumers really want to engage with funeral homes during this time? Look at this, since March 11th. So since this was declared a worldwide pandemic, since March 11th, funeral home and cemetery Facebook pages have experienced a 13% increase in engagement and a 26% increase in messages sent to the page, meaning Private messages, one-on-one, -on -one, consumer to funeral home to cemetery to crematory have increased 26%. The consumer absolutely wants to engage with funeral homes if you're providing valuable content and giving them the opportunity to engage. If you're automating content and it's just every day, grief and inspirational and content that says, hey, social security here, like that's not moving the needle. You're missing the opportunity to connect at a much deeper level with the consumer. All right, so I wanna address a question real quick. We have from Brian. What is your background in the funeral business, if any? How did you get involved in the industry? So uh, just to preset, I don't have family that own a funeral home. I didn't grow up in the funeral business. Uh, I got duped into the funeral business. I started a company right out of high school went to college, ran that company from my dorm room, dropped out of college, ran that company for three more years, sold the company, and uh, I'm just entrepreneurial by nature. My uh, girlfriend at the time, who I wanted to become my wife or fiance, and who is now my wife, said, hey, you need to get a job or my dad's never gonna say yes. And I said, well, I'm entrepreneurial, I don't want a job. She said, yeah, that's not gonna fly. He's looking for a salesperson, you can do sales, why don't you go work for him? I said, I don't really want to work for anybody, but like, if this is going to help me get to the point where I can marry you, I'll do whatever it takes. So uh, such, a your, such a sucker, charmer. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just a nice guy. And uh, so I asked her, I said, what does your dad do? And she said, my dad has a vault company. I was 20 years old. The only vault that I knew of in existence was a bank vault. I had no idea what a concrete burial vault was. Um, so I thought I was going to go apply to sell bank vaults. And it turns out it was concrete burial vault. So that was 2004. That's how I got involved in the funeral profession. Um, started calling on funeral homes in Ohio. My background's marketing and advertising. Um, started connecting directors as an outlet to write about conversations I was having with funeral homes. That has morphed into the largest online daily news publication for funeral homes on the planet. We reach 40,000 funeral directors a month from 212 different countries. And through the content I was writing about marketing, because again, that's where my background is and how funeral homes can use online and social media marketing, um, Disrupt Media was born. And eventually I left the vault company in 2012 to pursue Disrupt Media and connecting directors full time. Disrupt's got a team of 27. Uber creatives were located in Zanesville, Ohio. So there you go. That's my quick background. Um, so, all right, back to consumer shifts. Since this was declared a pandemic, 56% of people surveyed said they are pleased to hear about brands who are taking action, making donations, or doing good. 
They want to hear about brands, what, what brands are doing in response to the pandemic. So how are you shifting business because of the pandemic? 43% of consumers think it's reassuring to hear from brands they know and trust. So this is not the time to go dark. This is not the time to pump the brakes and not put out content and not talk. This is absolutely the time to double down and use the outlet that you have to engage with your community. And only 15% of people don't want to hear from brands at this time. So 85% of consumers want to know what's happening at your funeral because it's directly affecting people in your community. And if they can't go celebrate the, the loss of a friend, what can they do through your funeral home to be able to still celebrate virtually or you know, not in person? And then cleanliness. This seems kind of crazy, right? That we even look at a statistic like this, but here's the deal, like how you're cleaning your facilities, because some funeral homes in some states are still allowed to cycle 10 people in at a time. Some funeral homes are still having face-to-face -face arrangements in the funeral home. The cleanliness of your funeral home may seem kind of crazy to talk about, but it is massively important. And look, just look at the demographic that's most profitable for you. That 30 to 49 year olds, 41%, say it's important to know the cleanliness of the facilities that they're going to be going into. 47% of people over the age of 50 to 64, and then 51% of people over the age of 65 care about the cleanliness of the facilities, which makes sense because that's dominantly your demographic that you're serving. And two, those are the most at-risk demographics during this, this, this pandemic. And I'm going to add so, on, that doesn't have to be a complicated thing. That can be as easy right. as showing, you know, your different sanitation stations, um, you know, showing that if people are signing things that like, hey, we're wiping down our pins and stuff like that. Like it's those little things that will do a lot details. for your page. Yeah, it's all yep. about the details. And you may see, think it's kind of crazy, but it's literally taking a camera, holding up a smartphone and walking through your facility and showing where your sanitation stations are videoing somebody wiping down that pen at the registry book. Maybe you're putting, maybe you have a digital registry or a video registry book that you've set up and you showcase how that's being used, how you're keeping social distancing so people aren't spraying the machine, you're wiping the machine. Like, it seems kind of crazy that that is content now, but that is content that is valuable, it's real, and it will increase the amount of exposure and engagement that your firm will have because of that trust and transparency. Let's kind of think prior to this pandemic, the perception of consumers to funeral homes and what they think about funeral homes wasn't great. Now's the time for that trust and transparency and you can build that. So let's look at, at some disrupt media clients kind of by the numbers. Um, and we pulled four different posts. Yes, four different posts from clients um, to show you why talking about these things and what your funeral home is doing is so valuable to the consumer. Let's look at uh, this first one, uh, Posey Funeral Directors, about a four minute long video. Uh, it reached over 2,600 people and was watched over 1,215 minutes. I can't do math in my head, so I don't know how many hours that is, but it's a lot of hours spent with the brand digesting just how the funeral home is handling the current pandemic, the restrictions on gatherings. And in this video, Walker talks extensively about their ability to meet virtually and live stream every service that happens. Uh, Cruz Funeral Home, our, our friend Brandon, 12,000 people reached through this video, over 3,194 minutes spent watching that video. That is huge time. Where else can you get that much time spent with your brand for free. Like that is so, so key. Now, if you weren't engaged in social media or you've been automating content and you're not getting engagement around that content, no, putting up a live video like this isn't going to reach anybody and it's not going to get engagement. However, these firms that have been working with us have a history of continual content that's valuable, that gets high engagement in their community. Galbraith Pickert Funeral Home, 6,629 minutes viewed of this video and how their funeral home is handling this pandemic. 24,000 people reached in their community. And then this post by Dijon, this isn't even a 
video, this is how they're partnering with the local Catholic school and a fundraiser that they are doing for the nuns at that school. 4,626 people reached, 395 people engaged with this post for $0 spent. You cannot put a price on engaging 20,000 people in your community with one Facebook post. Like that is insanely valuable. And it, these funeral homes are getting the most amount of engagement out of any brands in their community. It's, it's crazy because the consumer wants to know what is happening. And when you give them that information and you are transparent, there is value in that. Real quick, let's jump to a question before we move on okay. to the next slide. So uh, David asked, how important do you think live streaming is right now for services? And how would you recommend starting out with live streaming? Uh, I think that live streaming is imperative and it should, if you haven't figured out how to live stream services, that should be the number one thing on your list right now. How to live stream via Facebook and then how to live stream via your website. So we've navigated this with a lot of funeral homes by quickly just finding a solution. Not a long-term solution, but like Zoom, we're using Zoom right now, setting up a, a computer with a webcam where you live streams through Zoom. That's a great way to also make that live stream private. If you don't wanna go live on Facebook and the family wants a private kind of live stream, you can create that live stream, give the link to the family. The family then can email out, text message out, invite specifically who they want to be able to access that live stream. And you can do it right through Zoom. We've had clients just use their phones, put their phone up, live stream right through the Funeral Homes Facebook page. There's a number of different ways to go live. Um, Microsoft Teams, Skype, FaceTime is more of a one-to-one. -one. Um, we've seen funeral homes use Skype at the graveside, Zoom at the graveside. Even though they don't have great data connections, it still will connect so they can broadcast that graveside service as well. Because we have a number of clients in a lot of states where there are restrictions on in home or in, in the funeral home gatherings, but outside there's not a restriction on the number of people as long as you can have social distancing. So they're having the entire service all at the graveside and then live streaming that. So um, I think that is it, it is extremely valuable. And honestly, in my opinion, going forward, we're gonna see where live streaming is not just kind of a line item option. It is part of every package where not only are we gonna have an in-person gathering, but we're also live streaming this for every single family. It's a great way if you're already set up with a company in the funeral space to live stream through your website to bring more attention and more visitors to your webpage. Um, on, on the social media side, there's ways that we can retarget those visitors. So there's a lot of value in getting that traffic. Some of the companies that are offering live streaming, I mean, I'm not gonna be able to rattle them all off, but Tukios and Legacy.com have partnered to offer a live streaming solution if you use those companies. Funeral One, Front Runner, um, Funeral Screen, Funeral View, Sympathy uh, Net, so sympathy.net. Um, there are just a, a number of live streaming options that are out there. Uh, that will let you connect to your website and live stream that way. But I think that if you are not offering live streaming as a free option at the moment, you absolutely need to. And then ongoing, you need to find a long-term solution. And a long-term solution is actually being able to live stream right to your funeral home website and bringing all that traffic into your funeral home, as well as being able to duplicate that on a Facebook live stream where you can, if the family will allow it to be public, you can get some, some juice from those viewers on, on Facebook Live as well. I'm going to go ahead and drop in the link to our uh, interview that we did with Walker Posey, wherever he's talked yeah. about the uh, positive benefits of live streaming for his business. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, we uh, did a great conversation a couple weeks ago with Walker about just how technology has changed what they're doing. Um, and, and that's super, super valuable. Uh, so thanks, Eli, for throwing that in there. All right. So uh, lead with empathy. Um, like it... <sighs> I don't know that we even have to say this, but here's the deal. Like your community wants to hear from you, but they want to know specifically the actions you're taking, not necessarily what your political or opinion views are on the current situation. They don't want your kind of hot take of, this is how I feel about the pandemic. They want to know what actions you're taking. 
Um, so lead with empathy, be simple, be straightforward, be supportive. Like funeral directors are some of the most naturally empathetic people that I've, that I've ever met. So empathy kind of exudes through you anyways. You're just caring who you are through your online engagements, but people don't care about your opinions. They care about the actions and what you're actually doing. So keep it simple. These don't have to be 15 minute explanations. They just need to showcase what it is the consumer cares about. Be straightforward. If you don't know, then you don't know. It's okay. You know how many of our clients have emailed and said, Hey, we're thinking about this. What are your, what are your thoughts? How could we incorporate it? Where I've had to say, you know what? I'm not really sure. Let's hop on a call and then let's hash it out together and, and make a pros con list and, and go forward. So not knowing the answer is okay, but be straightforward with that. And then also be supportive with that consumer. Um, I think that we are, you know, when we look at kind of how gatherings are taking place and families are kind of forced not to be able to have, you know, that comfort of friends and family around them during this time at a funeral home where a lot of healing takes place in that receiving line, a lot of healing takes place in that gathering at the graveside. There's a lot of things that families aren't able to do right now that I think long-term is going to create a grief and mental health issue. So how can you be supportive during this time with grief support and things that, you know, what resources do you have av uh, available? We'll talk about virtual grief groups in a minute and how you can start implementing some of those things as well. Um, but it's important to kind of take a, a step back, a 10,000 foot view and kind of look at your firm right now or your cemetery or your business in general and go, okay, how do we need to adjust our marketing? And you know, a lot of funeral homes and a lot of funeral businesses in the death care space started planning what they were gonna do marketing wise in 2020, back in October and November of last year. Guess what? Things are massively different right now than they were six months ago. So if you haven't gone back and looked at your kind of marketing calendar or the things that you have planned out, and made adjustments, you absolutely need to because we're not getting back to normal. There's going to be a new normal. And right now during what is currently normal, we're getting the consumer um, a taste of how virtual funerals can happen. That's not going to go away. So looking at your marketing calendars coming up and some of the things you should discuss, immediately decide what needs to be paused. Like what kind of push, like, you know, if you were going to do a community wide butterfly release for Mother's Day where people come to your funeral home or your cemetery and gather and you do a butterfly release, guess what needs to change? That content. You're not going to be able to get all those people together to do the butterfly release. So maybe now it's changing that content to be virtual and you're going to video the butterfly release. There's things that need to change and need to pause. If you had a hardcore pre-need campaign and mailers that have been going out over the last four or five weeks, those probably needed to be paused. We're now getting into where we can start talking about pre-planning, but not in the way that we traditionally would talk about pre-planning. There needs to be some adjustment. And, and this is a great time to talk about pre-need, but it's gotta be tactful, it's gotta be empathetic, and it absolutely can lead to sales if done the right way and navigating through that. What takes priority or do you need to pivot? Generic content. Like if you were just pumping out generic content, you're paying for that $2 a day grief and inspirational crap. It's not doing anything for your funeral home. It's not addressing the need of the consumer. And I'm not saying that grief and inspirational content doesn't have a place ever in your marketing because it does, but there's right places to drop that content where if you're surrounding it with a great organic strategy, it's going to make it more valuable and part of the conversation. So you need to pause that generic content. Right now is not the time to talk about grief and rainbows and butterflies. Right now is the time to talk about the real situation and how you're supporting families through this time period. Um, definitely consider paid ads, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, search engine optimization content, uh, Google AdWords. Um, so there's like a shift, right? A lot of brands have paused their Facebook ad campaign. So if you look at, you know, some of the largest 
spenders on Facebook are retail and food businesses. Both of those industries have been heavily impacted by closures and, and shutdowns where the money that was being pumped into Facebook has stopped. The cost of ad campaigns right now is actually lower than it was three months ago. So being able to get content into the newsfeed to amplify the good that you're doing, to run some pre-need lead campaigns that are tactful and tasteful, ads are a great opportunity right now to get more bang for the dollar because there's less spend from traditional businesses going into Facebook. Um, new and let's think about, ads, yeah, Ryan, ahead, let's think of like ads though too. Like, yeah, it's your face, it's your facility, it's you with your staff showing how you're gonna support the community through the worst times and get through this together. But also maybe you're doing a contest and you wanna boost that contest to get more reach. We're talking about ads that way too, which is not a hard sell at all. It's brand awareness, getting yeah. your brand out in front of them on their feed because what's everyone doing looking at the phone constantly that's all we're doing so when we're saying ads ads are going to be brand awareness just hey how are you we can help you whatever time just call us here talk to us we can help out however you can and teaming up with other businesses as well so when we say ads it's not hard sales it's just getting your name out there and then just working them down the funnel from there Absolutely. And one of my favorite ad campaigns that we're running right now is we have a client that every Tuesday goes live on their Facebook page where they are just answering questions that consumers have. And it's so cool because we throw a few bucks behind it in a Facebook ad campaign, maybe a couple hundred dollars a month. Hundreds of people in the community get on those lives and ask questions. Now he's developing relationships with families they haven't served in the past, families that have gone to other funeral homes and competitors that are now coming under their umbrella. And all this goes back to kind of some of the data that we know from NFDA's consumer survey that 90.4% of consumers shop zero to one funeral home when making arrangements. And the top two reasons that those families chose the funeral home that they did were proximity to that funeral home and relationship with that funeral home. So if you can create content that's bringing that consumer into your funnel and you're giving them value and they're establishing a relationship through engagement, there's a higher probability that that family is staying with you long-term because they've now established a relationship. And if you can continue to create the right content that keeps them engaging, it's a 90.4% chance that that family is going to be yours simply from the relationship that you've established through content engagement. Um, new forms of payment. This is an interesting one. And, and a, lot of our, a lot of our clients have gone through this over the last six weeks where they were not working with funding companies up to this point, where now cash flow with families is lower than it's been. Um, I forget the statistics. Where the spend's going to be lower as well, too, because they're not going to be, right. they don't know where they're going to be six months from now. So they're not going to be right. being the, the fanciest of fancy. There, there's reserves there. A lot of them are probably laid off and have lost their job. Um, so cash flow is not at a premium. Um, so offering monthly payment plans, offering just financial options that ease that burden. If you're offering those things or you're looking at it from a perspective of how do I start bringing on these companies to be able to offer those things, now's a great time to do that. Lending USA, c and financial assignment funding if you're not using these companies you should look at that because it can ease the burden and make that conversation easier for the families that you're serving to have and then this is a great time to do a digital audit um, and what that means is kind of step back and look at what are you doing right now digitally are you taking advantage of email marketing social media marketing and are you taking advantage of these options where you're actually getting value out of it and not automating it um, what traditional spend do you have right now that you could cut where you could get better reach and better return through digital marketing? Um, so we're going to give everyone following this webinar access to download a digital audit workbook that we've created, a free PDF that will walk you through kind of looking at your firm, your cemetery, your business, and understanding where you can put more money, how you cut things that aren't working, but really kind of lay out how you can go through a full digital audit and understand what you're doing marketing wise, social through, through digital and where you can increase what you're doing to get better returns and better reach. So that's going to be a PDF that we send you a link to, to download following this webinar. 
All right, evaluate your visuals and messaging. This is a big one. And then again, if you're working with a company where you're automating generic content or you're even going in and picking from already created generic content that goes out, you're opening yourself up to vulnerability because that's an automated message that you're not really controlling and the visuals were already created and the messaging was already created for that three months ago, six months ago, and not in real time. So it's not addressing the concerns. Some of the things need to change, like showing visuals of crowds or people touching. That is not a thing. Talking about how your word is as good as your handshake. We can't use the word handshake right now or showing people handshaking. We had a, a client send us some marketing material from a competitor early this, this week that they were putting out some sales tools through Facebook that show people shaking hands. Not the right messaging. We can't shake hands right now. Those types of visuals, social gatherings outside or inside, those visuals need to change. The terminology that you're using needs to change. A lot of funeral homes have gone away from even saying social distancing and talking about more physical distancing because we still need to be social and how we engage, but physically we need to be apart. Get in, get in touch. Not good verbiage to use. Don't use the word touch. Work hand in hand. That's not working right now. Business as usual. This is a crisis and business is absolutely not as usual. There is nothing in your life or the consumer's life right now that is business as usual. Everything in our lives have been disrupted and your content doesn't need to talk to the negatives of that, but your content needs to address the current situation that we're in and what you're doing to fill the gaps and alleviate the pain points for the consumers. And look, stay away from interactions or anything that lead to a physical gathering because that can be scrutinized. And believe me, the consumer will immediately disregard anything else and find that those two people in the back are standing arm in arm and that's not possible right now. Why are you showing that visual or that message? So stay away, make sure you are looking and putting eyeballs on the content and, uh, Stop posting alone. This is a really good one. And we included this in here as kind of a safety mechanism. Like there's a lot of times where I'll create content and want to get it out. And I'm so close to it that I miss certain things about that content. Getting someone else on your team's opinion, looking at that content, seeing if they pull anything out of it of like, hey, we should probably say this different or this visual doesn't map to the current situation. Like get some other eyeballs on that content or use a company that's creating that content for you where there's multiple safety nets in place that are looking at that content. Say goodbye to old visuals, hello to new visuals. Look at current imagery, revise imagery or push those campaigns when deemed appropriate. Look at what you're creating and things need to be created in real time and need to be organic to your situation, your firm, your cemetery, nobody else's. Your community is your community and they need to see what you are doing and you can't automate that. There's no way to do it. All right, is there any questions that have, that have come through, uh, gentlemen, that we need to address? Yeah, we do have one from Juan. Uh, I see the value that FB brings, so, but how would you complement your marketing strategy at Facebook with traditional media like TV and radio or would it not? It absolutely does. Your marketing strategy should all lead to one single goal because that's what we're doing. If it's you want to get more pre need leads or you just want more brand awareness and you want to have that same consistent messaging through all different platforms. But now let's look at today, 2020, April. Well, people aren't driving as much. The oil industry is going under right now. Uh, radio, radio companies are laying off a ton of people. Why? Because ad revenues being pulled away from there right now because people are getting laid off. So Facebook is going to be your best bang for your buck, as we've always been saying, right now, if you want to get in front of your consumer. And if you want a timely message out too, because Facebook is so real time that things change quickly. Um, we had a conversation with a client a couple of weeks ago that was in the midst of a prepaid billboard campaign and they're going, holy crap, like everything that we have for this billboard is showing how we can get together and the value of service. And we're talking about the values of gatherings and none of that is relevant right now. And they couldn't 
on the fly overnight change that marketing content to map to the current situation so i'll, I'll say this like have we helped clients integrate their traditional marketing with social media? 100%. You know, setting that marketing goal and everything funneling down to that one goal and using a holistic approach? Absolutely. I'll say this. It is extremely hard to get a consumer from one medium to another medium or media, meaning getting someone to see a billboard or a newspaper ad and then trying to funnel that attention online is very, very hard. What gives you the most upside right now? It's where the attention of the consumer is and the attention of the consumer has increased 35% more than prior, which was an everyday occurrence to, to Facebook and, and, and online and, and social media. So you've got to be present there. It's going to give you the most bang for your buck. And traditionally, let's look at this. If we look at the three ways traditionally most funeral homes spend marketing dollars, newspaper, radio, cable television. The average cost to reach a thousand people nationwide prior to the pandemic for newspaper was $32. Average cost to reach a thousand people through cable television, $8, radio, $7. Average cost to reach a thousand people through Facebook, $3.50. And those thousand people through Facebook can be 100% targeted and in the demographic that is most profitable and valuable to you, where you can't necessarily target specifically who sees a billboard, who sees your newspaper ad, radio ad, or television commercial. And let's be honest, audit yourself of how you embrace traditional media. I can tell you right now, in my household, in the last eight weeks that we have been quarantined in Ohio, shelter in place, shelter in home, whatever you wanna call it, there has not been one single second of live TV watched. Everything has been either recorded and we fast forward the commercials or streamed by my children. Now that doesn't mean everybody is that way. However, audit how you watch television and, and really look at, well, I get the newspaper every day and I look through it. Okay. What are you looking at besides the obits of your competitor? Like, are you really going through the newspaper? You're probably not. You're getting your news through your phone. So looking at, what you're doing traditionally and how you are personally embracing traditional media. And if you're in the demographic you're trying to reach, they're not mapping different than you are. So where can you spend that money to get the most upside where you can influence the, the consumer and best serve them? Another, another question that we have here, this one is probably kind of a unique situation, but I, I still think it's worth addressing. Um, from John, how does a new cemetery go about talking about services when we just opened up at the same time this pandemic hit? Like, wow, double whammy. Yes, that time, John. John. That, that time. sucks for wow. you. We're not gonna we're not gonna dance around how crappy that is for you, John. But let's look at the bright side. You've got the opportunity now to really focus on your cemetery, your mission, why you opened up, the story mm -hmm. behind why you opened up the passion that you and your team have to serve the community, um, the things that you're doing differently than the other cemeteries. What beautification do you have that other cemeteries don't, you know, do you have a cremation scattering garden? Like you don't have to focus on the gathering, focus on the why you exist and why you created the funeral home. There had to be something that drove you into opening a funeral or I'm sorry, a cemetery. Why create that content? Maybe this is a great time to profile your salespeople and create content around them and their hobbies and, and why they do what they do. Maybe this is a great time to highlight your administrative staff that the families are gonna talk to when they call into the cemetery. Maybe this is a great time to introduce your grounds crew and create content around the investment that you made and the equipment that you have to keep the cemetery looking beautiful. Maybe this is a great time for you to start talking about um, why you have different rules and regulations in place in the cemetery where you can be transparent with why on March 31st you remove all the flowers off the grave. Every cemetery client that we have, the only time they get negative messages is when they throw away flowers that have been on a grave and the consumer doesn't have any idea why because they never read the laws and they never read the dates and the cemetery wasn't transparent with putting that content out. Now's a great time to start creating some of that content. So we can completely disregard the fact that families can't come gather 
but there are a thousand different things that you can create content around right now that are insanely valuable and put you right in the middle of the conversation because it is your direct, uh, your differentiators right now that you can create that content around. And something I'll add, certainly don't apologize for trying to open up right now. You know, you're going to get some negative comments of people like, oh, opening up a cemetery during this crisis, how convenient. You're, you're trying to serve your community. That's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, own that, own the fact that you're trying to do something for this community. And yeah, there's, there's no reason to apologize for that. That's right. And don't we got let one the more 300 question. positive responses get drowned out because there's one negative person out there. That's, I mean, that's going to happen. Yeah. And let's just go ahead and knock this one question out right here. Okay. Anonymous asks, do you think it's acceptable to post national holidays and events? For example, National Dog Day, National Pet Day, or even Mother's Day. Do you think anyone would even care to see those? This could be visuals or quotes or both. And absolutely, to speak for both of them right now, it is still vital to do that. Are you celebrating? Of course you are. Is your consumer celebrating it? Yes. But what does that look like right now? Yes, absolutely. So you got to tailor that content to the time that we're in. So National Pet Day, you know, how are you getting more walks in with your dog? Where do you like to go in the community to take walks with your dog? Uh, what are you doing? You're sheltered in home with your cats. You know, have you made obstacle courses for your cats to run through? Like there are ways to incorporate this type of content into your social strategy. And Josh is absolutely right. The reason these things are valuable is not because they have anything to do with death care, but they have to do with content that the consumer is already going to be engaging with. So it's real time and relevant that you can interject into that conversation with something of value and grab that attention. So, you know, if you can create that content super organic to your funeral home. Maybe you're highlighting a pet owner in your funeral home. Maybe you're, you've created video messages for all the mothers of people that work in your funeral home and you're putting that out as a tribute video on your Facebook page. Um, maybe it's, you know, you're helping your community come up with ideas of things that they can do via Zoom or FaceTime or video conferencing with their mother to still celebrate. Maybe it is watching a movie together and streaming it via Facebook Live, or not Facebook Live, that's copyright violation, but through Facebook Messenger, direct one-on-one, -on -one, or FaceTime. Like, look at how you can incorporate these national days into the current time period that we're in and organically into your funeral home. Okay, so that, that question is a follow-up. Um, the biggest thing we're getting from it, though, is that our clients are making posts about it and thanking us in the process. Absolutely. When you can engage and give ways for your customer to appreciate and celebrate, whether it's their dog, their mom, a national day that they care about. Like today is National Admin Assistant Day, Administrative Assistant Day. This was a great time to highlight those administrative assistants that work in your funeral home or cemetery or in your business. Like, could you have created a thank you video for them and went around and had every single employee that interacts with that administrative assistance on a day-to-day -day basis say something nice about them and then you post that as a surprise or you give that to them on a thumb drive as a surprise. Those are the things that we're incorporating with our clients and, and ideas that we're feeding to our clients so they can embrace these things that are going to be celebrated nationally. How do we get into the conversation and make it beneficial but organic to that, that business, that funeral home, that cemetery? Uh, thanks, Anonymous, for being on. Yes, we will be sending out the recording. Uh, it should go out later this afternoon when Zoom makes it available to us. We'll send the link out. And it'll right. also be on our Facebook page if they yes. want to watch it it'll there. it'll live on demand on Facebook and uh, Disrupt Media's Facebook and Connecting Directors Facebook. All right, on with the presentation, back to the basics. Let's keep social media and let's keep it flowing. So when this, first pan this pandemic first kind of came to be, we had funeral homes that were like, pump the brakes, we need to go dark, we don't need to be visible, this is a bad time, we're going to shut up shop. We literally had two clients that said, hey, we're turning the lights off and we're going home. They realized five days later that was an insanely bad move because now their competitors are getting the attention. Business doesn't stop. 
whether you're a funeral home or not, it is not taboo to talk about what you're doing and still market. You're not marketing because of the pandemic. You're marketing because you are a business and you need to stay open. Addressing the pandemic in your marketing is what makes it relevant. So we have a, a stock kind of reply that we've created for when the consumer has something to say about a funeral home currently marketing or putting out content. And it's not, you know, we've had to use that three times over the last eight weeks with 200 plus clients. So it's not, it's not a, a big problem, but you got to stay marketing. So how do you keep marketing and creating content for everything? Showing your process. This is interesting. We had a conversation with one of our clients that is in Washington state. Washington state was one of the first kind of hot spots in the United States. And the funeral director, when we were talking said, like our processes for everything have changed. He said, down to when we would go make a removal in the hospital, we would throw that sheet down on the counter, I'd grab the pin from the nurse, I'd fill it out, she'd sign it, I'd sign it and we'd go on our way. That simple process, I can't throw that sheet down on the counter, I can't grab her pin. I'm having to bring my own pin, we're having to sanitize the pins, we're having to sanitize the counter if we do put the paper down. Like those processes have changed, that removal process has changed. The way that you're getting families in and out the door of your funeral home if you're still able to meet with them face to face has changed. We've got a funeral home that has multiple viewing rooms, very large funeral home. Their state is only allowing 10 people gather in a specific area at one time. They have set up on the floor kind of arrows that show where you go and where you wait. Nine people in this room, nine people in this room, nine people in this room. Here's where you stand for social distancing. And then a funeral director comes and gets those nine people, takes them into the viewing. They're spaced out on the floor. Like, what does that process look like? Where have you put sanitation stations? How are you cleaning your facilities? Um, do you have a company that's coming in that's using the electromagnetic, uh, I don't know what they're called. They're electromagnetic cleaning machines that you know everyone is talking about right now from a commercial cleaning level. What are you doing? What is that process? Your consumer cares and it's great to show. How are and they're you going to demand it too? That's right. They're going to want they're to start know demanding it. Like it's going to be completely it. different from this here on This is out. going to become a normal conversation going forward. This is part of that looking forward to normal. This is part of that conversation ongoing. We're going to have a heightened sense of awareness around sanitation and the daily cleaning, cleansing routines. You know, are, how are you? <clears throat> getting families to the cemetery if they do have a graveside service. Are you still offering a family car? Is that possible? How are you cleaning that car? How are you handling meeting clients? Maybe families don't want to come into the funeral home and sit face to face. So how are you handling Zoom, phone calls, virtual arrangements? What are you using? How does that process work? Being upfront with that, how are you handling up pickups of cremated remains? Now we talked to one funeral home who said, look, the family calls when they get in the parking lot, we bring the urn out, we have a stand that we're sitting the urn on, we call the family back, let them know the urn's outside the door, the family comes up, they pick up the urn, no contact, we keep social distancing or physical distancing. Like what does that process look like? Prepare your community as much as possible. Now, we did get one question from a client, it's like, well, if I create all this content, I'm just giving the playbook for my competitor to do it. Listen, at the end of the day, can your competitor copy everything that you're doing? Yes. But if they weren't engaged in social before and have built an audience, nobody is seeing that and it doesn't matter. And they're not going to continue it long term. So it doesn't really matter. Like you are the innovator. You're the one that's up front first. Everybody else is just imitating. So be the first, be the most transparent, and be the most human, humanized. And you got to keep posting content. Do you need content every single day? Absolutely not. It's absolutely quality over quantity, but out of sight, out of mind. You need to keep that routine. You need to stay top of mind. Discover posting times that work best for your audience. Like this is something that we do for our clients. We're running analytics. We know the days of the week and the times of the day that are best to post for them to get the most organic reach. And guess what? It's not uniform. It's like, you can Google it and there's gonna be suggested times on a thousand different websites that are gonna say, hey, post this time for this type of audience. It is different for every client. 
and we use software that analyzes when we post and you got to test different times and you got to test the reach and the, the quality of the engagement, but that is going to allow you to spend less money and optimize the money that is being spent inside the platform. And then customer service is key, responding to messages ASAP. Like I mentioned on slide three, I think it was, or five, slide eight, it was slide eight. The increase in messages has gone up 26% during this pandemic to funeral home and cemetery Facebook pages. So responding to those messages, and we have absolutely received first call messages through Facebook Messenger of families that are saying, mom just died, dad just died, grandma just died, what do we do? If you're not responding right away and having mo somebody monitor that 24 seven, you're missing that opportunity. Our average response time is less than 15 minutes. The consumer expects a response within an hour. Most businesses are, re are relying on an eight hour time window to respond. The faster you can respond and get to that consumer as soon as possible is key in that relationship and how you're servicing them from a customer service level. All right, I saw a few questions pop yeah, up here. We got. We got a couple of things. Uh, before okay. we jump into the question, I just want to highlight Mark here, who we were talking about quality content. He said, we started a bi-weekly live Facebook chat with local officials in our community to share what they are doing. And uh, we've had guests, including a pastor, a CEO, um, an owner of a local grocery store. Our viewership has doubled, if not tripled. We are engaging our community. So just shout out to that. Yeah. That's, that's the type of stuff that needs to happen. Mark, that's what's up, my man. Uh, that is what you need to do. And it has nothing to do with death care, right? It has everything to do with relationships. And that's a great kind of kickoff point for the next part of the, the presentation that we're getting into. How can you partner with some of those other businesses in the community? And how can your businesses help each other grow and engage the community and provide better service and, and just be good players in the community? Look, for the history of time, funeral homes have been pillars in their community. You have been a staple business in the community. Now is the time for you to own that position 100% and be the leader. Mark, what you're doing with your funeral home is dynamite. Those relationships are going to produce other relationships ongoing. Those business owners, when they talk about you know, experiences they had during the pandemic are not going to forget about how you elevated their awareness by going live with them on your Facebook page. And Facebook Live video gets 75% more reach and 75% more engagement than any other content. Those videos that I showed you in the beginning, three of them were Facebook Live videos. There's a reason that we encourage our clients to go live. You saw the amount of minutes that equate to hours of time spent with that content. Um, I'll, I'll give you this little bit of nugget. Our top 50 clients in the second half of March, after this was declared a pandemic, the amount of time spent with their content across the board was 2,127, I'm sorry, 2,027 hours of time spent collectively on those 50 pages over the last 20, 19 days of March when this was declared a pandemic. The consumer is there, and if you give them a reason to engage, they absolutely will do so. Let's pivot real quick to some, just I would consider it kind of Facebook basics uh, before we continue with our presentation. So we have a question from Chuck. He said, I've just joined Facebook due to the pandemic. I'm a funeral home supplier. I currently have only accepted friends to my Facebook who are currently funeral directors. Should I accept all Friends, as some may find my content valuable and ask funeral homes about my business. Yes. I mean, I don't, it's who you are. And, and look, I, I have one personal Facebook page where I've got thousands of people I'm connected to outside of the death care space and thousands of people I'm connected to inside the death care space. When I post content related to Disrupt and what we're doing in the death care space, the people outside don't really engage with it much. When I post pictures of my family, everybody engages. I think you can, you can kind of have that yin and yang of, of content. Now, that said, that doesn't work for everybody. 
it, it works for me. Um, you may be better off, Chuck, creating two different profiles. Maybe you're Chuck dash whatever company it is that you work for, and you use that profile to just engage people in the death care space. And then, you know, like I have a, I have a friend that on Facebook to, for business connects, he's David last name to friends and family. He's Dave last name on Facebook. He's just shortened his name and, or goes by a nickname and engages people that are friends and family on that profile and keeps everything business and personal separate. It's really what works for you, Chuck, uh, is what you got to do. And then the other question, is it best to have all your information on your generic Facebook page or does it benefit you to have a Facebook group for your concentrated group of followers? Uh, from a business perspective? Uh, just doesn't really ask. So I would assume like, okay, so like these things that we're asking them to do about like showing their processes and stuff like that, is that stuff that yeah. they should just be showing to like a small group of people who engage with their, uh, who are maybe pretty active in their business? Or is that something that we want to show out to the whole community? You got to show that out to the whole community. Yeah. That's extremely, yeah, extremely and valuable. Yeah, let's talk about like removals. You're not going to be showing that stuff. Let's, you know, let's get back to basics. Like you're not going to be showing right, your removals right. and everything like that. But the process that Ryan already brought up about how are you going to give the trade off from the, uh, an urn? How would that process look? How are you going through your daily sanitation when maybe a few weeks from now you can have more people into the funeral home? just those type of processes that's going to ease everyone's minds like okay what's the first step to interact with this funeral home and how are they protecting me along those lines and i would say where uh, groups can be nice though is if you want to start some grief support groups on facebook yeah, that maybe that's stuff that you're going a little more in depth on stuff and maybe it's a little more personable so like yeah that's something that could be cool for a facebook group but overall we want to get that information out there for public Everybody, and we'll we'll talk a little. We'll dive in a little bit more on on the grief groups. I do want to answer uh, David's question on: Do you see any issues making virtual arrangements with older demographics? So uh, that link that that Eli dropped in our chat to the interview with Walker Posey um, is great because we addressed that uh, immediately. Uh, I asked that question to Walker, like you know, this older demographic, how are you doing getting them on Zoom calls, and is there any hurdles? And of course, there's going to be some, like there's, there's going to be some technically challenged people, excuse me, but how Walker has pivoted and how we've kind of walked other clients through this as well is Zoom doesn't have to be the end all be all. If they can't figure out Zoom, no problem. They've got a mobile phone, let's FaceTime. Like almost everyone that's got a, an iPhone or a smartphone has done some sort of one-on-one -on -one video chat. Is it as easy because you can't show your screen? No, but it is a great workaround that they'll understand. Um, and so you got to be able to pivot and it can't be one size fits all. You got to have a couple different options in your arsenal where you can address every family. But for the most part, um, funeral homes that I've talked with, the Zoom and the technologically challenged older demographic hasn't been an issue. They've been able to figure it out. Um, and they found you know, very easy tutorial videos on Zoom that they're sending families prior to um, actually connecting like, hey, when it's time to connect, here's how you do it. So here's how you do it on a mobile phone. Here's how you do it on your desktop computer or tablet. And I'm just going to comment on Dylan had another comment. He said, I have a Zoom this afternoon with a client to walk through virtual capabilities. This will be the fourth or fifth time I've done something like this with a client. And I would encourage all to do so, especially from their home office, because they're seeing me as I am working hard, being all about their business. And I'll say that's, that's great. It, you can also showcase that through social media, though, to right. show even more people what you're doing. So, you know, that's as simple as, um, you know, having someone take a picture of you while you're there FaceTiming um, your family or something like that. You know, there's ways that instead of just that one family seeing you in this environment, we're going to have your whole community seeing you in that environment. Yeah, it's... Uh... One good job, Dylan. Like I know Dylan, uh, he's the man. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what he's doing and connecting with funeral homes and showcasing that, Hey, even as a supplier, like this is affecting us and we're doing everything we possibly mm -hmm. can to make this an easy process for you as the funeral home, you as the cemetery crematory. Um, that is key. I love it. Keep doing that. 
but also share some of that on your social and where you're connected with your clients at online as well. And look, here's the funny thing. So um, because of all these Zoom meetings and, and, and our team is remotely connecting twice a day through team Zoom calls and a lot of other funeral homes are doing the same, connecting with families and their staff. A lot of funeral homes are sending the majority of their staff home and they're working remote until there's a family that may be coming in or there's a viewing or there's an actual service and then they're coming into the funeral home. A fun thing to do is showing kind of this, this, this uh, well, the, the perception that your business on the top half that can be seen in the camera and from the waist down, you're super casual Joe. I did a call with a client the other day and he stood up and he said, check it out. He had a suit jacket on, a tie and a button up and gym shorts on the bottom. Like those are some funny things that everybody is kind of going through as they're working at home that you can showcase that can be real time. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be the suit and tie every single second of the day. Like you're real people and showcasing that is, is key. Are there anything we need to answer right now or would we suggest moving forward? Um, um, David had one here and just a normal chat. We'll go through it. He's talking about security concerns resume. What other options do we have? And we've, we've gone through a little bit. Google Hangouts right now is paid, but we've got Zoom, um, also Skype. But I know, but Zoom has fixed a lot of the security issues over the last few weeks because of the rampant use. So they've had a lot of updates of really beefing up the security issues on that as well too. Go to meeting also Microsoft Teams is uh, going to be me is one Join so me, you, Zoom, ton of different options Teams. in there. Yeah, if you don't want to use Zoom, don't use Zoom. Uh, I will say from personal like usage, uh, in my opinion, Zoom is the easiest. Uh, to use over Google Hangouts because the person has to have Google Chrome to use it. Uh, Microsoft Teams, um, join me, go to meeting. I still think Zoom is the easiest. You can also it's the most use, reliable. Yes, absolutely. You can also use some messaging software too. Like there's there's uh, messaging components that will allow you to do group phone calls and and things as well that are free. Um, at the end of the day, if we really cared all that much about security, we probably wouldn't even be logged onto this webinar. <laughs> like we wouldn't be on social media or use email or use a cell phone. So um, we use Zoom with our company. We haven't noticed any security breaches or anything like that. Um, I did just read an article that the SBA let go millions of small business data because of a security issue with their loan application process. So you're not going to get around it. Um, but there are other options if, if you have a concern with Zoom. And let's go ahead. And since we're on the roll of questions, let's do uh, what would you suggest for a funeral owner who doesn't like to be in front of the camera? We have staff that would be great in that regard, but we really think that having the owner on camera answering questions via Facebook live or outreach, will help our clients feel closer to us. Yeah, uh, so here's the deal. Like there's some things that you have to do as a business owner that's best for your business. And your only insecurities come from yourself. Like people are not judging you on, on video. Like, I don't know, like um, I did a selfie shot Facebook video in my driveway Sunday evening. Like there's not this quality control um, type experience and, and profiling that happens through Facebook video. But if you're just not comfortable, then, I mean, is it going to hurt your business? It's not going to help your business. Showcasing somebody else is great. Like building that personal brand for your staff is beneficial as well. Is it more powerful if it's the owner? Yeah, but look, if you can't be on video, you can't be on video. However, I bet that you could figure out a way to record the video. It doesn't always have to be live. Record it 10 times if that's what it takes to get it right. Make yourself a transcript that, that, that hangs on the wall and you're kind of reading from it with bullet points or word for word. Um, there is power in, in the video and the person at the top that everybody knows being a part of that content. Um, but is it a deal breaker? I mean, I would say it's a deal breaker. Somebody else could be on video, but you know, two, we also have to quit being so hard on ourselves because we're the only one judging us. And then another question, when you get a like on your page, should you thank everyone individually for liking your page? 
No, because that's insanely difficult, insanely <laughs> time consuming. Nobody expects it. And you're not going to be able to see every like anyways because of privacy settings. Um, if someone's commenting on a post, you definitely should respond if it warrants a response um, or they're leaving a message or a review. But just for someone liking your page, you're not going to know that every, every single person that liked your page and um, is it necessary to like or you know get a message to every single one absolutely not you could create a video thanking the 500 people that have liked your page in the last week and put that out as content and kind of blanket everybody with that that's the best way to show your gratitude is just going to be by giving them quality content that's that's right that's right all right i'm gonna keep moving so how can your business help with others collaborate 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 each business feeds into each other. You are, most funeral homes are very community oriented and cemeteries are as well. So how can you collaborate with other businesses, whether it's leveraging your audiences, so you shooting a live video or video with them, sharing it on your page in return, they're gonna share that post to their page where now you're, you're crossing the audiences and getting exposure for both brands to a different set of, of consumer. Um, email campaigns. So we personally have done some, some things in our local community to give back. Uh, there are businesses that are around us in our downtown area that our staff eats at every single day, where I take clients for meetings uh, when they come into town, where we have our Christmas parties. Um, there are businesses that, that support us and talk well about us and are happy that we're in downtown, even though we're not working with, with, with them, there's still a relationship there. So we partner with our local chamber of commerce um, the second week of the pandemic where we bought a thousand dollars worth of business or gift cards uh, to local businesses that, that are partners of ours, that support us, that we're friends with, um, that our staff loves and supports um, with their patronism downtown, um, patronage downtown. So uh, we bought gift certificates and we did a collaboration with the Chamber of Commerce where we created a post on their Facebook page um, and, and that post reached over 40,000 people in the community and we gave away 10 $100 gift certificates to, to local restaurants. We've partnered with some other companies in the death care space that are, are doing things for funeral homes. Um, we've partnered with a lot of companies in the death care space financially where we've remained anonymous because we just want to be able to give back to the profession. So whether it's an email campaign with a local business where maybe, um, you know, we've had clients that are doing gift card giveaways. So the funeral home will go buy gift cards. They'll give them away through their Facebook page to local businesses. And, and both brands are getting exposure out of that. Um, social media contests, email campaigns. Email campaigns, you may be thinking like, how, how could we partner on, on an email campaign? What if you sent out an email campaign about the local funeral, the local churches, online Mother's Day service that they're going to have, or information about how to stream church online with the local churches in your community? What if you partnered with hospice and some of the things that you can do to support people that are in hospice facilities that can't have visitors? Maybe you orchestrate a drive-by where you go, you know, you let the hospice center know that you're going to have about 60 cars that are driving by and going under the awning of the front door of the, the nursing home. So get everybody in the nursing home in the front room because you're going to be honking and waving and, um, you know, just doing something to, to say hi to those people that are missing family because family can't get into the nursing home. Like there are so many things that you can do that will build engagement for your brand give back and help you connect with other brands and build relationships. Insane amount of things that you can do. And these are all things that, gosh, in March we were presenting, I can't remember, we had, a, we had an all hands creative meeting where we talked probably about a hundred different ideas that we presented to clients that made sense from ways they can partner with local businesses through social media and in different giveaways. The local box is one of my favorite. Um, and kind of what we're looking at here is, you know, a lot of us maybe get monthly subscriptions to clothing boxes that come or like my mother-in-law's awesome and she got my family an ice cream of the month for a year. So like subscription where we got a different ice cream every month. 
Like what if you went to local businesses and you put together this box of, you know, maybe it's a discount cards, maybe it's gift certificates, maybe it is just a free product that that business offers to get them exposure. And you hold a contest on your Facebook page to give that away. Maybe it's all centered around grief. Maybe you pull, you know, every funeral home and cemetery are partnered with people that have grief content and are grief specialists in the funeral space. Maybe you're partnering with them to give away resources to somebody in your community that, that needs that grief resource. There are so many things that you can do. You know, you get takeout at a local business and you take a picture of that takeout and your staff eating it back at the funeral home. Tag that local business. You're both getting social power from that and exposure. Man, like right now is so, so opportune for you to do great things in your community. And look, there's things that you're going to want to do that you want to remain anonymous. And, and that, that is great and do those things. But there's ways that you can partner with local organizations for food drives. Um, we had a, a funeral home client that did a blood drive in their funeral home and par partnered with um, the blood drive company, Red Cross, and, and showed that on their Facebook page. They showed the stations they had set up for social distancing. They created content around it, and they had a ton of people that came through their funeral home one at a time and donated blood. Like there's things that you can do on a national, local, state level organizations you can support. We could talk about this. This could be its own webinar, like ways that you can partner with, with local companies that are like-minded or just local businesses where you both can get great social brand power out of those partnerships. Do good, support the community and support those, those families that are supporting you. help others selfishly. We're talking about exposure a lot. Um, it doesn't have to be all about exposure and there's things that you can do that aren't building benefit for you, but they're building benefit for somebody else. Um, keeping the community informed, using sources that are credible, don't capitalize on the crisis. And what we mean by that is there's price gouging that's happening. Like don't up your prices due to scarcity. Don't start charging thousands of dollars more for, for gatherings at a later point, just so you can make back the money because the family didn't have the gathering right now. Like you still have to be a good human being during this time. Show humility, show empathy. There is going to be a huge grief issue of families that are not able to grieve and get the, the compassion and the things that they need right now understand that understand what families are going through this is massively difficult for you because you've had to pivot and do things the same for your families nothing is as was and business as usual and tone absolutely matters so to my cemetery peeps out there this one's for you as well like right now gray space hot covid19 sale that's not going to fly and work with anybody. The same on pre-need, like a message of now's the time to pre-need more now. people are dying. Like hurry, ASAP, sale going up. Like that is not the tone. Tone matters and you've got to be able to create content that's objective to tone and, and where, where people can't read it and try to spin it and what your tone meant. And look, and don't be an alarmist. Don't feed the frenzy and the panic. Be respectful, be thoughtful. Don't step outside your lane. Your lane is to not give your, your, your lane is not giving your opinion on the pandemic and local decisions that gover government officials are making that affect you in gatherings and things. You just gotta adapt and talk about how you're adjusting. Stay in your lane, what you know and what's specific to your brand and your business be respectful, be thoughtful when it comes to your language and your visuals. These are all things that have to be a heightened sense of awareness. And I wanted to point and out also one with thing real quick, Hillary, um, who, who was a client of ours, said that they did a virtual bingo and people loved it. Yes, a virtual bingo card on their Facebook page that listed some of the things that people are doing during the pandemic, like... Um, using hand sanitizer more than I've ever used it before, streaming everything on Netflix. Like 
you know, there, there's virtual bingo cards that you check the box, how many people get the most bingo, who can get a full house. Like, it's fun. People are commenting and posting pictures of their bingo card. They save that image, they print it off. We did some coloring contests around Easter for kids where families could download the image from Facebook, kids could color it. They're uploading a, a comment with a picture of that coloring contest. Like, so much cool stuff can be happening right now. Sorry, Josh, I didn't mean to cut you off. I wanted to No, that about like the art alarmist and stuff. Like, so if you are going to be sharing any type of resources, I, I would just say like, don't be that guy or girl that's just like, well, no masks here because yada, yada, right, left wing dot net says this. Don't. Credible sources, don't be that person. If your area is suggesting you wear masks, just go right along with it because you don't want to demonize yourself. Yes. And, that, and that's the next thing too, like as business, businesses start to open and shelter in place orders are lifted, you know, how are you supplying masks when you can start having people into the funeral home more than 10 at a time? And a lot of businesses in, are going to be required to provide masks for consumers if they're coming into the business and they don't already have one on, gloves. Like, how are you prepping and what are you doing in your funeral home to, to make it as safe as possible as things open back up and we, we start to learn what a new normal looks like? Uh, Jill, uh, in our chat, yes, this webinar is being recorded and we will be posting and sending out to everyone that registered through Zoom a copy of the the webinar to watch on demand or you can visit the disrupt media facebook page or connecting directors.com facebook page and watch the live stream on demand all right as we start to wrap up here look be positive not grim this is your time to really enforce the purpose the vision the mission the value of your companies uh and this goes back to the cemetery question the gentleman asked about hey we're a new cemetery what do we post this is where you land. You land on your purpose, your vision, your mission, your values. What are those? How you're supporting your community? Double down on the content that you're creating around that. Um, and use these parameters as an anchor during these uncertain times because these are constants. These are not gonna change because this is the authenticity of who you are and who your brand is. But this is also a good exercise to remind your team what you stand for. Look, every brand has had to go through this. We had to go through this when this pandemic started. We went remote. Our, our meetings to start off with were really about who we are as a company, what we're trying to do, how do we continue to serve and amplify how we're serving? How do we go deeper with clients? How do we get more engagement with clients? Like we had to really get back to the core of who Disrupt Media is to be able to serve at a high level and provide content like this, it takes a complete team collaboration. And this is a great opportunity for you to get back to those roots. And look, there's some businesses and there's nothing wrong with this where you've probably never addressed your purpose, your vision, your mission, your values with your team. Now's the time to create those. Now's the time to hone in on what is, what is the core mission of your funeral home, your cemetery, your business. Be accessible and be open. Human stories are the gateway to your audience. And I'll give you an example on this. We had a client that did a drive-through or drive-in kind of viewing, not like drive-in movie. We've had clients do that as well. But this, this client did a drive-in. They, they have two garage doors on their crematory and they set up the casket, did a viewing, cars would drive through, the family was there in a receiving line. They put their registry book on wheels that could be wheeled over to a car so people could still drive it. No one had to sign it. No one had to get out of the car. They had somebody that was manning the registry book, cleaning the pen, wiping it off with a Clorox wipe every time somebody used the pen. They documented all of this on their Facebook page. And following this event, they got a video testimonial from one of the family members that was shared on their page. Those three videos had over 220 hours of time spent watching them. And they were about a total of, I would say altogether, less than two minutes of content, all three videos, if you added them all together. Amazing. The trade-off was maybe $100 spent promoting that, that content, so people, more people in the community saw it. And no, I think we spent 40 bucks 
promoting that, that content, 217 hours of time spent watching that content. So absolutely insane. So human stories, sharing those family experiences, getting a family to talk about what the virtual arrangement process was, what the live stream, you know, watching the live stream, how valuable that was and how connected they were even visually and virtually attending that funeral. Again, show the process. How are you making X during these times? Whether you're making something, cleaning something, sanitizing something, visiting virtually with somebody, like how are you doing it during these times? And how is your company coping? Like, look, you are not exempt from this being hard. Like you are not exempt from the struggle of having to pivot and so many things having to change. Be real, be raw. How are, how are you filling the time with your employees and with your customers? And how are you filling the void of not being face to face with families? Look, out of any profession, this other than maybe like a nurse, this profession is more huggy than anything else. Like the standard greeting, greeting for a family coming into your funeral home is a handshake and a hug. Neither of those things can happen. That is not only hard for the family, that is massively difficult for who you are as a person and your empathetic nature and just humanity of wanting to console and comfort somebody who's grieving. Talk about that. Talk about the difficultness of not being able to hug and give handshakes. I got to, a not, not like I was happy about it, but I had to attend a graveside service for a very close family friend that passed away the day before Ohio went to their shelter in place. So we could still have the graveside service with about 20 people. Um, I will tell you that as an attendee and someone that was grieving as, as well, it was just the most uncomfortable, awkward situation to see a grieving widow standing at the casket under the tent, bawling, and not be able, no one be able to walk up and hug or put their arm around that person. Like that is massively impactful on everybody. So how are you coping with that? How is your staff coping with that? Um, spotlight your premieres, your, I'm sorry, your peers, that remote culture. How, do, how is culture staying intact? You know, that is key for our company. As a creative company with a bunch of millennials, like pinball and pool and ping pong and Nerf guns in just an open, crazy, loud office environment at sometimes is the normal part of our, our culture. We do not have any of that right now. Our meetings have to support our culture. They gotta be quick, they gotta be to the point. They, they, you know, we're not just wasting time hanging out. Like, are we doing virtual happy hours? Like. We open up some meetings with prayer at the beginning of the week and at the end of the week. Like, how are you keeping culture in the fabric of being remote through FaceTime, Zoom, social media, those humor interactions, how are you keeping that as true and as empathetic as possible in a time where we, we can't be present or physically together? And some additional items that you can address. Encourage your audience to call someone every day, even if it's just to say hello. Again, physical distancing, not social distancing. We still need to be social. This is a great one. So every, oh, I, I believe every state up to this point, maybe not, I could be wrong. There should be some states where, but this is close to my heart because my, uh, my, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law and, and my wife own a hair salon uh, and spa. So they have been closed and people, like there's great fail videos online of people trying to color their own hair, cut their own hair. So if you're getting a family member to give you a haircut or you're trying to cut your own hair, this is a great piece of content to share just the reality of the situation we're in or getting consumers and people that follow you to share kind of that experience of a family member cutting their hair delivering flowers or meals to a local hospice, cookies. How are you doing that? Um, we had one client that was encouraging uh, people in the community to write letters to, to just like adopt a 
grandma, adopt a grandpa, adopt a healthcare worker, where they're writing letters, sending it to the funeral home, and the funeral home is just randomly giving these thank you letters to, to frontline workers at, at hospice facilities, at hospitals, other funeral homes. How can you partner and just give grace and empathy and thanks to other people? How clean is your ride during quarantine? Like this is something that's interesting because not a lot of families are driving to get somewhere, but I know personally for my family, um, four times we have just got in the car and gone for a drive an hour or two at a time, exploring country roads, driving to other towns where we don't usually go just to get out of the house, to roll the windows down, to get some fresh air. How clean is your ride? Maybe you get people that, that are showing pictures of, of how they're cleaning and you go to AutoZone and you have AutoZone donate a giveaway of car supplies and you tag them in every post and you do a contest. Show off your masks. So many people are doing DIY masks right now. Like how can you embrace those people doing in your community DIY masks? Are you commissioning people in your community to build masks? We have clients that in kind of the downtime when they're not serving families, they're making masks and they're donating them to hospice workers or donating them to hospitals, doctor's offices. There's gonna be a lot of requirements almost in every community when we come back to what the new normal is where we've got to wear masks. You know, me, I'm trying to find a company that will bling out a mask for me, but I'm learning that poking holes in the middle of a mask almost defeats the purpose of wearing the mask. So now we're going back to like the engineering of a mask and how we can double layer it so I can have a blinged out disrupt masks that matches the brand. Like you can make lighthearted content around the things that are happening that can be super impactful. And then virtual grief groups. I think this right now is one of the biggest opportunities for death care companies, whether you're a funeral home, a cemetery, a crematory, a direct cremation company, Grief is something that is uniform across the board in your business. There is going to be a huge grief and mental health problem that comes from families not getting proper closure because they couldn't go to the hospital to visit a dying loved one. They couldn't go to the hospice facility and be side by side with that dying loved one. And then they had to bury or cremate that loved one without any type of service, without any type of closure that is going to create an issue. Creating a private Facebook group for your community that's either private or public, that is up to you. Private could be where you're just inviting the families that you're serving to that grief group. You could create a public grief group where you're making it available for everyone in the community because this is really in impacting everyone that's in your community. Somebody's been connected to someone that's passed away during this time and haven't had that closure and it's impactful. Reach out to those people that are your grief specialists. How can they provide you content, live webinars, live streaming, grief support groups? We've got a number of clients that held monthly in-person grief support groups that those have stopped, but they've now gone virtual with those grief support groups through a private Facebook group, or they've even live streamed them through their Facebook page. I see this as one of the biggest opportunities to have a group that's centered around grief care um, one of the best grief resources I think that's available to, to funeral homes and cemeteries in our profession is Damani Care for Grief. Damani Care is an aftercare company. They've got a grief platform that is phenomenal where not only can consumers get content and digest content that's valuable and valuable content that you would be able to share in this grief group or through content on your Facebook page, but they've got ways to virtually connect with therapists across the country and grief support specialists. Look, you don't have to be the grief support specialist as the funeral director. That's not your wheelhouse. You're comforting. You're not necessarily a therapist. Providing a safe haven for your community to gather, to have grief conversations that you can facilitate and then get the right people that can help them navigate that is going to be huge and will help your community understand the pillar and the resource that you are. Okay, I could talk about that one all day too. Um, give updates to your audience as it pertains to your business and how you operate, and then showing the measures you are taking to keep families safe while they're inside your funeral home and as they are able to now start coming back to your funeral home 
and you can have larger gatherings. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen, um, but again, social gives you the opportunity to be 100% real time. And look, when this all started, things changed day to day for about 12 days in a row, maybe a little bit longer. Every single day we were creating new content for the new situation that our clients were in. So one day it was 100 gathering, the next day it was 50, then it was 25, then it was 10, and then now some states have gone to no gathering. Every day you're having to pivot and create that content. That's the value of social is it's that real time outlet. And look, if you don't have somebody like a disrupt that's helping you navigate those conversations, you're not a professional marketer. There's so many things that you're missing. And again, if you're paying somebody and go, well, you know, I do have a marketing company and they're automating some grief and inspirational content. You're completely missing out on the opportunity you have to build relationships at a much deeper level with your community. Um, so and that's a theme that's going across all of it. And that's why we keep putting it in there. It's details, details, details. If you can take care of the most transparent, easiest things that a lot of people always seem to swing and miss, that's where you're going to get the calls. That's where you're going to take the call volume from competitors. That's a hundred percent correct. You got to be what that consumer is not getting anywhere else. Uh, virtual mother's day. So some States will have, things lifted. There will be ways to get together for Mother's Day. There's going to be way, other states where you're not able to get together for Mother's Day. Cemeteries, we have a number of cemetery clients that do Mother's Day ceremonies and butterfly releases and, um, you know, they're, they're dedicating a tree every Mother's Day or a garden. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, Mother's Day is a very personal day that in a lot of areas that's not going to be able to be, be done. So virtually, how can you do it? You know, presenting ways that families can virtually connect with their, their mothers, whether it's Skype, FaceTime, watching a movie together via FaceTime or Zoom, hold a contest or giveaway where you can honor a mother in the community that's deserving of a special gift, um, celebrate cooking, get people to share recipes that were their favorite. You know, how can you embrace mothers that are no longer with us and provide ways for your, your community to honor that mother? Maybe you create a post on Facebook where you're asking families to tell a story about their mom. And it's just an outlet for them to tell that public story that they wanna share. And it's a way for them to cope with mom not being around and still celebrating her life. Father's Day is right around the corner as well. This is typically a grill out type holiday. Who knows in June, we may be able to grill out. We still maybe not be able to grill out. It depends on where you're at, but maybe you're giving away a grill kit. Maybe you're giving away a grill brush and you know, some charcoal or lighter fluid, or like you put together this Yeti cooler with a bunch of grill out supplies in it. Maybe you're giving away, I would say lawn dart game, but that's dangerous. Maybe you're giving away like yard twister and it's a game that you can play because now we can get within six feet of people. I don't know, like it's gotta be real time, but there's ways to celebrate these. And then your National Nurses Day and Essential Workers Appreciation. Like this is a thing and it's going to be even bigger than normal. How are you going out of your way to honor those other essential workers, which is you as well? You know, maybe you really break the mold and you do something super awesome for your competitor and their funeral home or cemetery workers. Maybe you're buying and delivering them lunch I don't know, like there's some cool things that can be done where you're building relationships in your community and you're getting a lot of social good out of that content. Tutorial, showcase great landscaping your funeral home has and feature the lawn company that you're using in your community. If your cemetery is contracting out your mowing, which a lot of cemeteries do, highlight that mowing company and the great job that they do. The same with your funeral home. Maybe you hire that high school kid that's just on his grind or on her grind trying to make a few extra bucks for college and you can shout them out and get them three or four more clients because you trust them to work on your landscape at your funeral home. Like again, just thinking outside of the normal and, and how you can incorporate other people and other brands and other businesses into your marketing in your community. And I, what more with that, like with Lowe's and Home Depot, I don't know how it is everywhere across the country right now, but I've never seen houses, landscaping look magnificent in my neighborhood. It's, it's just transcendent because a lot of people have some time on their hands right now right. and they're going to go do some uh, landscaping. That's right. 
All right, and, and this time really re requires us to get back to basics. And this may sound crazy because a lot of you may not have a business plan. Maybe this is the time that you create a business plan. You look at you know, the potential new normal for the next five years and what's that look like? You know, what's that look like for your business? Maybe you need to alter your business plan because things have changed. You need to plan, not panic. Find ways to deliver additional value to clients. We are in a experience driven community and in society and that is only going to be heightened by the restrictiveness of us getting together like we've got to be able to provide valuable experiences where we are not with people in physical person but virtually like there are ways to have virtual celebrations of life that can be valuable finding additional value to deliver to clients and that's costing you zero dollars like you can have a free Zoom account where you can have up to 100 people for free for 40 minutes on a Zoom call. It's free, F-R-E-E -E spells free, it costs you zero dollars. It's a few minutes of your time. It's valuable. Think about if you were gonna do this in person, you would be spending infinitely more money because you would spend crazy amounts of money on newspaper ads that nobody's gonna see. And you would spend money on food and cookies and you know, decorations. You don't have to do any of that. You can create this event, spend some money through Facebook to, you know, a fraction of what you would have spent through the newspaper to promote it and get hundreds of people for free on a call where you've got their dedicated attention. Details make or break your business. Highlight the services. Hammer down on the, the main functions of your business. Are they working? Do you need to pivot? Highlight the service and products you don't normally show. And this is a great time to maybe go in your arrangement room and start showcasing some of the memorial jewelry that you offer. Maybe this is a great time to start showcasing solidified remains. You know, maybe you started offering parting stone and it's a answer to hundreds of families in your community that have cremated remains sitting in a closet somewhere in their home. Josh has parting stone right there. Parting stone like, right here. Solidified remains. Maybe this is an opportunity great. for you to offer new things through your funeral home that give you a marketing advantage. Maybe you started offering financing options and you want to talk about those payment plans, like educate your potential clients before they ever need you when more attention is being directed to you online now. So more than ever, the economy is quiet. Now is a great time to build up those systems, start those tough projects. Maybe there's changes you needed to make in your firm. Maybe there's process changes that you needed to make. Now's the time to do it when things are a little bit slower. Doing the hard work now allows for greater things in the future. Business plans absolutely need to change because things are not going to be business as normal ongoing. You know, so, you know, your consulting company, your marketing companies, if you're not using a marketing company that's in the space, specifically in social media, it's time to do so. And you should be looking for things like organic and real-time content and strategies that can be changed and you're not paying for advance for billboard and newspaper campaigns that you're having to create stock material for where you can't engage the consumer. Everything that you do going forward needs to look at how you're building that relationship with people in your community. So God forbid we have something like this happen again, but how are you going to be prepared if it was? There are thousands upon thousands of funeral homes that were caught with their hands up and no idea what to do when this all went down because they weren't proactive in embracing technology. At the start of the pandemic, less than 25% of the funeral homes in the United States had a solution to live stream. That's insane. Live streaming has been around for 15 freaking years. Prior to Facebook, you can live stream funerals. Like it has been around and less than 25% of funeral homes offered it. And the funeral homes that did and had an immediate solution, boom, they are winning in this environment. If you have social media and it's automated, you're losing. If you don't have social media and you're not engaging, you're losing. Funeral homes that embrace an organic real-time content strategy, winning absolutely winning right now because they've been able to pivot the message has changed it's real time it's addressing those problems and, and, and pain points with consumers and it's building trust and transparency 80 percent of the families that you serve are because of a relationship that you have with them or somebody in their family or somebody on your staff has with that family 
this is the time to leverage those relationships and build more through content engagement. And pick a goal and stick to it. Be specific about what you want to achieve going forward and have a plan of how you're going to get there. And that's one of the other things that we're going to give you in a week or two after we give you the digital audit, audit workbook that's going to be insanely valuable if you work through it. And look, and if you don't know where to start with that, reach out to us. We can hold your hand and walk you through that process. We built it. That is what we do. But the next We will hold their hand. Virtually, we'll hold their hand. Yeah. See? Duh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're talking about. Second pair of eyes on everything that we do. That's right. That's See, exactly that's what we're all about. Man, we set that and teed it up perfectly. <laughs> Good job. So we will virtually hold your hand through that process. Um, and the other uh, workbook we're going to give you is a content planning workbook. Planning out the content. What networks does that content need to go on? Look, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, not really relevant, but Snapchat, TikTok. Like, where should you be? What type of content should you be creating? And every network requires a different type of content and content being positioned a different way because the ways that you use the network and engage with content are massively different network to network. So having a plan, we're gonna send you a content planner workbook that will help you detail out some of that content that needs to be created, where it needs to be going and how you're going to one, create it and distribute it again. Virtually, we can walk you through that and, and help you plan that content. All right, focus on ways to generate more cash flow and ways to innovate. You are having to get more creative in the ways that you do things. So looking at different financing and funding options, how can th things be more streamlined from a marketing standpoint? Like where are you wasting money in traditional media where the consumer can't react to it and doesn't build a relationship? relationships are more the focal point with funerals now than they've ever been before. Families are gonna see more value in that gathering than they ever have before because it's been taken away from them. How are you positioning yourself from a marketing standpoint where you can showcase these things in real time and actually get value out of the engagement? No one can engage with your commercial, your radio ad, your, your billboard, your newspaper ad. They can't like it, they can't share it, they can't comment on it, they can't give you a testimonial around it. How are you leveraging and spending money smart through marketing that's streamlining that process and can have impact on financials going forward? Looking into ways to getting leads, like start doing some more pre-need conversations and attack Build that pipeline. Way. Build the pipeline. Listen, we are turning back on pre-need lead campaigns with all of our clients right now that are running campaigns. They are working phenomenally because we've positioned ourselves through this time period to be more humility, more empathy, more humanization of the brand. The relationship has been strengthened through the, the forward thinking of our clients. We're now pre-need with a soft lead push is really helping generate more pre-need leads and getting that conversation started. An online funeral cost estimator, again, transparency. We built and launched PriceMyFuneral.com last year. Can be used by any funeral home in the country. It's self-serve. It's $1.99 a month, unless you're a client of Disrupt, and it's $99 a month. We're generating over leads for under $10. And in the last 90 days, we have helped clients generate more than $384,000 worth of leads by just for providing a funeral cost estimator right on their website and using social media ads to get consumers there and engage. That is value. There's an exchange there. You're allowing that funeral, that consumer to have control. They're getting an estimated price. In return, you're getting data that you can use going forward. Text message services for grief support and appointment setting. We're partnered with Damani Care. Our clients are getting free access to some of their grief content as well as a trial period with their aftercare program, phenomenal. We personally use their appointment setting service. So if you don't have somebody to handle those appointments on leads or your staff has been kind of thinned during this time, they are great at setting those appointments and following up with those leads that you're driving. So a great service to check out. Make the effort, contact your current leads. Go back to past families you serve for testimonials. 
send handwritten cards to people that are in your pipeline, families that you served. There is nothing that can replace a handwritten, signed by you, put a stamp on an envelope, send it physically to somebody. Like that means so much. I was at a study group at the beginning of March where I presented and created relationships with about 50 funeral homes that we didn't have relationships with. I got a lot of emails and a lot of text messages like thanking me for being there. They appreciate the relationship. The information was paramount. I got a couple handwritten letters that just blew me away. Like that I got a handwritten thank you letter was amazing. So start stepping outside the norm. You've got a little bit more time right now because you're not meeting families in their you know, face-to-face arrangements aren't taking as long as normal. Send some of those handwritten letters. Ask how you can be of service. Social distancing and masks are going to be here for a while. How is your funeral home adapting and reacting? Are you going to install Perel st- stations in your funeral home? We've got a number of clients that are working with their distributors to get hand sanitized stations that can be used that you like, like you see at concerts. We have cemeteries that are putting out hand sanitized stations that you know are big and open and where you can still have social distancing, but multiple people can use them. Like, how are you adapting to what looks like could be the new normal for a little while? All right, we have covered a lot of information. Are there any more questions that we need to get to uh, before we, we, we wrap up here? I think we're, uh, we're good on the question side. I do wanna read, uh, Dylan did kind of leave us with a final, final thought. He said, are you reassuring your clients that you're there to serve even from a distance? That's going to carry more weight than anything. So 100%. I just whether, want to share that. That's whether you're a cemetery, a supplier, or a funeral home. Yes, reassuring your clients. Um, I very rarely have the you know. It, it's hard to scale my time one on one with two hundred plus clients. Um, but I, I've taken the time during this pandemic to send emails one on one to every single client, um, video messages and just reassuring our clients that we're here, the changes that we're making, how we're changing their content going forward, how that process looks, just reassuring. And it's, it's been invaluable, the conversations that we've had. You can do the exact same thing. Um, and, and Dylan actually sent me a video that he created that he sent to his clients that was super transparent um, and very raw of how personally he's, altered what he's doing to be able to serve clients as a salesperson and supplier where he's in funeral homes every single day and can't be right now, like reassuring your, your, your clients that you're there. Like this, look, this is the time. And I, and I hate to say that this is an opportunity, but it really is. The cream will rise to the crop during this time. It is an opportunity for you to harness the greatness that has been given to every single one of you to come out of your shell, to engage your community in ways that you never would have thought of before that are going to be valuable. Look, all of you were created for a specific purpose and there is greatness in you. Now's the time to harness that God-given talent and go serve your families in different ways than you've ever served them that will be more valuable and will allow them to understand the value that your funeral home, your cemetery, your business provides to them where life going forward in a normal scenario looks absolutely different and you're a part of that process ongoing. It is absolutely plausible for a funeral home to be a go-to for content for the consumer if you do things the right way and you build those relationships and you connect the same with a cemetery, the same with a supplier. Maybe you're doing webinar, like this is a great way for us. There were 330 plus people that registered for this live webinar. We're building relationships because we're a powerhouse when it comes to social media. Nobody and this does is, it better than we it, do in this profession. Education, you may think the community knows and people say even 60 and up, know what to do if a death occurs. They just had a death occur 
all that's thrown out. They're going to be just not in the right headspace. So just really nailing down the basics, again, the basics, you getting on a video, showing up what they can experience after a death. I mean, there's very tasteful ways for you to go in and just talk about this stuff and reassure and take them through the process of what they will experience. That's right. hundred percent. Well said. Dude, well said. What do you do? What do you do? And if and you really it, want right? to pop, wear one of Josh's tiger shirts that he has. On exactly. Too. Yeah, that's, that's, right. <laughs> exactly. that's right. That's right. So look, this quarantine isn't going to last forever, but we can't predict when it will end. But what is important is that we remain hopeful, we remain determined, and we encourage you to prepare for a better and brighter future while being thoughtful and proactive during this pandemic. Business as usual is not a thing. Like things are changing and you've got to be able to adapt and pivot. And at the end of the day, you are serving families, like Josh just said, that have experienced grief. And now is the time where you step up more than ever. And there is a magnifying glass on how you react and how you handle this time. And more relationships will be built that will be future relationships that are so valuable to your funeral home or your cemetery that you're not going to be able to put a dollar amount on it. Like this is, this is the time. And look, we have never intended for this webinar to last two hours. Um, you know, I had on my calendar an hour. I'm actually running late. And so are these two for a three o'clock meeting that a team meeting that we're going to be having. Um, but like, here's the deal. It, it, we've, we could talk about this for the next 12 hours. None of you have that kind of time. If there's anything that we said today that got your kind of brain in that wheel turning and you want to have a deeper conversation about how it can be applied to your business, your funeral home, your cemetery, how we can come alongside you and, and help navigate through this time and ongoing, how you can leverage social and online marketing to be not only profitable for you, but emotionally and relationship profitable as well and how you're connecting with your community. If you go to disruptmedia.co slash demo or even disruptmedia.co, you'll be able to click on the demo button, schedule a demo with us, call that phone number. That is my direct email address. Um, and no, I did not leave off the M on co. It is not .com. It is .co. If you send an email to Ryan at disruptmedia.com, I don't know who gets it, but it's not me. Um, Ryan at disruptmedia.co. Let's connect. Let our team walk you through that. Let us show you what we can do for your, your funeral home, your cemetery, your, your brand, and how you can really start embracing social, build relationships, and, and navigate through a crazy time that nobody knows how to navigate through. We're all in this together, and we're making pivots and changes every single day but let us be that that vehicle that helps you navigate that time anything else to add gentlemen no uh if anyone says they are the expert on pandemics you can just tell them no no one's ever experienced this there's nothing comparable to it the world just paused and now we're having the fallout of it. And I'm sure we're right. going to for the next few years. But like I said, everyone's going to help everybody get through this. All ecosystems go cycle together. So just help your neighbor out. Help another business out. Just let's look at on the positive side of things that we're going to get through it. And we will get through it. Awesome. I just want to reiterate, you know, I've been moderating the questions over here. I believe we got to every question, which is cool. But if, if we missed out on yours or you just didn't, you're re-watching this later and you're like, oh shoot, I don't have the live option to ask questions. Once again, just message us on Facebook, email Ryan, we will get back to you. That's right. And if you got any questions right now and you want to throw them in the chat, like we can hang out for a few minutes um, and answer some of those questions. Those of you that are on, thank you for attending. Um, yeah, thank you very much. a lot much. of positive comments in the chat. So, so thank you for, for that as well. I know we got a couple uh, of our clients on here. Um, we appreciate you. We're glad that you're, you're, you've kind of already been privy to some of this stuff and are implementing it already. Thank you for your feedback in the chat on how well it's working, how awesome our team is. Yes, we are blessed, man. We got uh, a team of 27 that is, that is phenomenal in the way that they serve and the heart that they have and the mission that everybody's bought into. Um, 
uber creative. Like, uh, I am not the most creative person on this team. Like, there are multiple people far more creative than me that we've been able to surround ourselves with and our clients with. So, uh, thank you for being on and, and the nice things that, that you're saying. But if anyone's got any um, questions, uh, can you give me the name of the grief program you recommended? Yes, Rosemary, thank you for being on. Uh, the grief program I recommended was Damani Care for Grief by the Damani Group. If you go to damanicare.com, um, and Josh just put the, the link to their website right there, not demonicare.com. I'm, I'm a dummy. The, the demonicgroup.com. You can check them out. Uh, if you don't find what you're looking for or you want a direct email introduction to the team there, um, shoot me an email and uh, I'll make an email introduction for you uh, to get hooked up with them. But uh, really good service. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, thank you, Graham. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, John. Thank you, Billy. Sean, thank you, Jill. Um, yes, we are sending out the, the recording to this later this afternoon, uh, as soon as it becomes available through Zoom. It takes a little bit of time, so uh, we'll get that out. It, and it could be as late as tomorrow morning, but it, it should be this evening. So um, again, thank you all so much. Thanks for trusting us. If we can help you in any way, please reach out. Uh, we know what we're doing, and, and, and there's a reason and a method behind what we do. Um, and, and the funeral homes that are experiencing it and cemeteries that are experiencing it um, have been insanely prepared for this moment for months because they've done the hard work and they've built the relationships and we're able to now have that outlet to engage the community. So thank you. And uh, we're going to hop off. So uh, peace out. Everyone stay healthy and safe. Um, I can't wait till we can see you all knee to knee face to face at a conference sometime, hopefully in the near future. Um, but if not, we'll keep coming to you virtually because we know it's important. And shoot, so I can talk all day. I got something I want to say. We'll just keep it real like this. I can talk all day. So uh, we'll keep doing these webinars if we can't get together soon. So thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, we are bugging out in three, two, one.